Start recording. Here we go. Your first grade 12 trig. Now, what's special about grade 12 trigonometry is that we don't have to have right triangles anymore. Sokotoa only works when you have a right angle in the triangle. I actually don't need a right triangle for what we're going to call the sine law. So on page two here, we have this beautiful formula that's actually uh, three ratios put together called the sine law. Now I'm going to actually write down a little something that's going to help us in our work here. I'm going to write down, helps if I turn the pen on, I'm going to write down Use this one when calculating an angle. And then over here I'm going to write OR, and I'm going to put another box together here. And the sine law can be written upside down. You can write it as little a over the sine of big angle A equals little b over the sine of big angle B equals little c over the sine of big angle C. And then for this side, I'm going to write use this one when calculating a side. So the formula has two versions of it. One's just the other one flipped upside down. So there's my two formulas. So add that to the notes. That's the first thing. If I'd have been putting these notes together, I'd have given you formula in two boxes like that. Now, when we were doing Sokotoa, I did point out to you that we like to label our triangles using three letters, and we use capital letters for the angles, and we use lowercase letters for the sides, and we always make sure that an angle across or an opposite from its side has the same letter. And you could probably figure out everything there is to do with right angle trigonometry, completely ignoring that rule. Some of you just go, oh, I just like to call the thing I'm looking for X. And that's fine. That'll get you through Sokotoa right angle trig. But it gets kind of complicated for this kind of trigonometry if you don't follow the rule. So one more time, the rule is this is angle A, which means that has to be side A. People watching this video can't see my hands, but a good way to think about it is if you think of an angle as two lines that open up, well, the line that they make has to be the same letter as the angle. So this angle is this, this line, and this line opening up. Get it? So that's why this one has to be A. So that's, that's the way you have to think about it, OK? So let's see. So that's why that's A and A, and B and B, and C and C. So make sure that you understand that that's the way the lettering has to work. Otherwise, this formula won't work if you don't label your triangle properly. Okay, now what? Well, let's get to an example where we have to use this. Elliot's family owns a house on the Gander River in Newfoundland. Their closest neighbor's house is 2.5 kilometers away. A surveyor uses a theodolite to measure the angles between the houses and a nearby communication tower, as shown in the diagram. Use the sine law to determine the distance from Elliot's house to the tower to the nearest tenth of a kilometer. Oh, boy, that's a lot of words. This thing here is a theodolite. And uh, if you ever seen a survey crew when you drive by on the highway, usually one of these things, it's mounted on a tripod. And there's a guy standing behind it. And he's working on it. And he, he, he looks through this thing. It's kind of like a, it's like a binocular, really, is what it is. And uh, there's usually another guy standing over on the, somewhere further down, and he's holding a stick. And the stick is usually orange and white and has markings on it. So this guy's looking at the stick. You don't have to draw all this fancy stuff. That's a survey crew. And survey crews, survey crews sorry, use trigonometry pretty much every day. 
and it's to measure things that you couldn't actually measure physically, right? You can't stand, you can't run a tape measure across a busy highway. And uh, sometimes, for example, you would have something like there's a hill in the way, and you want to know the distance, say, from here to, you want the distance from here to, like, the middle of the hill. Well, you can't cut a hole into the hill to measure a distance, right? So to measure distances that you can't directly measure, you use trigonometry, and you use a tool like a, a theodolite. This theodolite thing, by the way, is not the most complicated piece of technology in the world. At the end of the day, it's essentially a protractor. You know what I mean by a protractor, right? Those things that measure angles. And if you've ever done that thing in grade seven where you take a protractor and you put a drinking straw on it, you can measure the angle of something just using a protractor. That's essentially what this tool is. It allows you to measure angles through the air without, you know, without having to draw it on a piece of paper or put it onto a map and then use a protractor. So that's what we're doing. We're trying to figure out Okay, let's look at the diagram. They gave us a nice diagram. What number do we, what, what measurement are we looking for in the diagram? It says, determine the distance from Elliot's house to the tower. So we want this line, Elliot's house to the tower. We want that line right there. That's what we're looking for. Okay, I've decided that I would like to call that A. So I'm going to be solving for A. So which corner gets to be angle A? Is that Elliot's house, the neighbor's house, or the communication tower? It's got to be the neighbor's house because, again, we have to follow the rule that opposite angles and sides have the same letter. So that's angle A. Does it matter what I call the other ones? Not really. So I'll call Elliot's house corner B, or angle B, which means that this distance here has to be side B. And then, oh, this is a nice coincidence. C for communication tower is at angle C, which means that this is side C. Does it matter how I label them? Not really. But as long as I match which angle and which side pair up, that, that matters. That has to happen. Okay, let's write down the formula again. The sine of angle A, oh, wait a minute. I'm looking for a distance, sorry use the version where I'm looking for a line. Put the lines on top. A over the sine of A equals B over the sine of B equals C over the sine of C. Okay, this formula has six parts to it, and I only need four of them. Or another way to look at it is, it has three ratios, and I only need two of them. My first step is to figure out which two I'm going to use. Well, I don't know anything about side B. I know angle B, but that's not going to help me figure out angle A. What I'm looking for, or sorry, is side A. Side A is what I'm looking for, highlighting in green. So I'm definitely using this part of the ratio. Am I using the B one or the C one? Well, I know, si I know side C. That's the important part. I know this side, right? It's right here, 2.5 kilometers. So I am going to use those two ratios, I'm going to use A over the sine of angle A equals C over the sine of angle C. Now you might be thinking, well, but the problem here is that I don't know angle C. Yeah, but I can figure it out really easily. I can use my 180 trick to find angle C. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go, okay, angle C plus 65 plus 80 has to equal 180, right? All three of these angles have to add up to 180 degrees. So 65 and 180 is 145, I think. Oops, that's supposed to be a plus. And once again, subtraction will get that angle C by itself. So there we go. I don't have to use a question mark there anymore. I know that this is 35 degrees. And now I know three out of the four parts in my formula, right? This formula has four numbers, side A, angle A, side C, angle C. I know three of them. So I'm going to put them in. I don't know A yet. That's what I'm looking for. But I know angle A is 80 degrees, right? Neighbor's house. Side C is 2.5 kilometers. And angle C, I just figured out, 
is 35 degrees. Now, how do I get the A all by itself? You know me. If I can put a problem into an algebra thinking, to me, algebra is the way to think. So I look at that and go, A is being divided by something. What's the opposite of dividing? I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by the sine of 80. So this is 2.5 times the sine of 80 divided by the sine of 35. Now, some people, again, algebra maybe is not your favorite thing. You'd just rather memorize a rule. You can memorize a rule here. In fact, some people have a name for this. Some people call it cross-multiplying. Have you ever heard that before? Where this denominator that's in my way crosses the equal sign in an X move, and then it multiplies with the thing on top. They call that cross-multiplying. And you don't have to write this down, but you saw this back maybe in grade 7 or 8. Remember doing equivalent fractions? Maybe they taught you cross-multiplying when they were teaching you how to fill in that blank. 3 out of 4 is how much out of 8? And you're probably going, well, that's an easy one. If you just times 4 by 2, you get 8. So 3 times 2, it's 6. Okay, Yeah, you're right. It's 6. But what if instead of a 4, what if it was something not so easy like it was a 5? I said it's a 5. 5. What do you times 5 by to get to 8? Mm -hmm. Some decimal. So that's where you learned how to cross multiply. You were taught that this 8 crosses up to here, and then 3 times 8 divided by 5 is the blank. So if you remember that, that's, all, that's the basic rule that I use to do this calculation. And that would be 24 divided by 5. What's 24 divided by 5? Um, 4.8. So there you go. It would be 4.8. I'm not even going to write it down. What's this one going to be? I'm going to need a calculator. Okay, so get your calculator out, and let's punch buttons and see if we get the same number. I see a couple of you using your phones, right? You know, you just turn it sideways, and that gives you sine, cos, tan. Keep in mind when I test you, I kind of want you to not use your phone on a test, obviously. So make sure you get a calculator between now and, and sometime next week. Gary? No. Um, okay, so... A couple people here have the kind of calculators where when you, when you hit sign, it opens a bracket for you, right? I know the other class had a couple guys like that. Make sure you close the bracket after. So I'm going to type in 2.5 times the sine of 80. Now again, when I hit sine of 80, did your calculator open a bracket for that 80? If it did, close the bracket. If it didn't open a bracket, you don't have to touch brackets. Divided by the sine of 35, and I, okay, hang on, something went wrong. 2.5 times, am I in degrees? Yes, I am in degrees. The sine of 80 divided by the sine of 35. There we go, that's the right answer. Okay, so I've got an answer. Where does it tell me to round to? Look in the question, does it say where to round? Nearest tenth. How many decimals is tenths? That's one decimal place, right. So that's going to be 4.3 when I round it. Did you get that? It's actually 4.29, blah, blah, blah. Is that what you got? And if you stop there, I got to take off a mark too. 4.3 what? Yeah, look at the question. It's in kilometers. If there's units in the question, there's got to be units in the answer. There we go, 4.3 kilometers. So that's how I use my fancy new formula called the sine law. You'll notice that we use trigonometry, we use sine, and this triangle here didn't have a right angle in it. If there was a right angle, I wouldn't use the sine law. I'd use Sokotoa because it's easier. But there we go. Any questions on how I did that? Feel free again. I'll, uh, I'll answer any questions if you're stuck. Anybody not get this number when they punch buttons? Did it work? Okay. All right. What if we had to figure out an angle? So go to the next page. And there's the formula with the angles on top. And here is a pulley winch in an automotive shop is suspended from a ceiling by two support chains. One of the chains is 2.4 meters long and forms an angle of 55 degrees with the ceiling. The second chain is 3.5 meters long. 
So they gave us a nice diagram. And this time, I'm being asked, use the sine law to determine the size of the angle that the second chain makes with the ceiling. So I'm being asked to find this angle here. That's a question mark. The angle the chain makes with the ceiling. Okay, once again, I need some letters. So why don't I call the thing I'm looking for A again? So that's angle A that I'm looking for. So which side is the side A? Is it the 2.4 or the 3.5? It's the 2.4. So this will be side A. I guess I'll call the other angle over here B, which makes this side B. And then, oh, once again, nice coincidence. C for ceiling, side C. Okay, the formula is up there. We don't have to write it down again. We can just kind of scroll down and look at here. Let me make that a bit smaller so we can fit it on there. There's the formula. Which two parts do I want to use this time? Again, you can never use all three parts at once. Think about it. An equation can only have one equal sign in it. So you can't use all three parts and have two equal signs. Do I want, well, I want A. So I definitely want to find angle A. So I definitely need this part. But do I need the B part or the C part? Well, I don't know anything about the ceiling. And I don't know anything about angle C. So I actually want the B part. All right, let's plug in our numbers. I don't know angle A yet, so I'm leaving that as angle A. But I do know side A. It's 2.4. And I know angle B. It's 55. And I know side B is 3.5. So once again, the, the rule is cross and multiply. So sine A is now all by itself. And I have 2.4 times the sine of 55 all over 3.5. And now we punch buttons. And we figure out a number for the sine of angle A. So I'm going to punch buttons now. 2.4 times the sine of 55. And close the bracket if it opened one for you. Divided by 3.5 equals... And I get 0 0.5617, blah, blah, blah. Gee, that's a small angle. A half a degree? Look at the picture. I know the picture is not to scale, but could that possibly be a half a degree angle? No, we're not done yet. I don't want to know the sine of angle A. I want to know angle A. So what's my next step? Right, the inverse of sine to this little decimal. By the way, if you don't show these two steps that I just wrote down, I don't mind. If you want to jump right from, from the, uh, the, the step here to the answer, that's okay with me. So angle A is the inverse sine of my answer. Now, I don't know about you, but I, I hate repunching decimals, so I'd never do it. You don't have to repunch the decimal. If you don't know how to use the answer button on your calculator while you're working, I'll come around and I'll show you how to use it. Pretty much every scientific calculator has an answer button. It always remembers the last calculation you made. And it doesn't round things, too. That's nice. So I get 34. And OK, where do I want to round this one? What does that mean? So what does that mean? How many decimal places does it want? It doesn't want any, right? Zero decimals. So 34 degrees. And by the way, if you forget the degree symbol, that's like forgetting a unit. So don't forget that. Just like the last question we needed to put kilometers, we need to put degrees. And that's it. There's the two examples. You can now work on this lovely worksheet that we put together called Sign Law Quest. And uh, thanks for watching the video, guys watching the video.